the 2017 paper. Okay, this is a 2017 paper. Uh, first section of it, one to, one to ten in the multiple choice. Okay, which of the following diagram shows the correct structure of DNA and you have a whole pile of diagrams. Okay, so you know that DNA is a connection, set of connections of your basic nucleotide. You should know that the five prime end is attached onto the phosphate and that the three prime end is at the end that's going to connect onto the next phosphate. Okay, what you should also know is that we have an anti-parallel strand. So on the other side, and I can never get these drawn the right way around. Um, that about right? Not bad. Okay, um, we've got our uh, polygon, what's pentagon, flipped over. Okay, because um, we've now got our three prime at this end and our five prime at that end. Okay, so we're just looking for this basically. So in in this one. And A, our 5 prime is with the phosphate on this end, phosphate on this side, it's flipped over, actually A is all good. Okay, just to be clear why B is not good, uh, we haven't flipped over this, so that's not right. Um, on this one here, again, we haven't flipped over our, anti our kind of whole strand. And on this one, although we've got the structures around the right way, we've got a 3 prime and a 3 prime, which is incorrect, that should be the 5 prime there. And that should be the three prime. Okay, so definitely A. Question two. A section of double-stranded DNA was found to have 60 guanine bases and 30 adenine. What is the total number of deoxyribose sugars in this section? That's not a ridiculous amount of maths in this one at all. Okay, if I've got 60 guanine, then I also must have 60 cytosine by definition. If I've got 30 adenine, I must have another 30 thymine. Okay, that's 60. And that's 60, and that's 60. 3 times 60 is 180. Not the worst maths you've had to do. But check with your calculator if you need to, because never trust your brain in an exam. Okay, question three. The following terms... Hmm, that's fine. Following terms describe different structures into which DNA can be organised within cells. Linear chromosome, circular chromosome, circular plasmid. Which of these terms describes how DNA is organised within photosynthetic plant cells? Now, I think they were actually trying to help by putting this one in here, by making it photosynthetic. Because if it's photosynthetic, you know there must be chloroplasts there. And if you know there are chloroplasts there, you should that should kind of trigger your, your thinking that actually they're a bit strange, those organelles, because inside those organelles, you actually have circular chromosomes. Okay, why I'm saying they're being nice is as soon as it was a plant cell, then automatically there were also mitochondria in there. And mitochondria also have these circular chromosomes. But they've not made it clear that you have to remember to think about them, but they are reminding you about the photosynthetic one. So the fact it's also a plant cell means it's a eukaryotic cell. And you know in the eukaryotic cells that we have a nucleus, and a nucleus has linear chromosomes. So basically, we're just looking for that. Okay, so linear chromosomes, circular chromosomes, doesn't have plasmids because it's not a bacterial or fungal cell. And so one, two, there we go. Okay. Sorry, I'm getting my mice and stuff mixed up. Okay, question four. Which of the following molecules are required in the replication of the lagging strand of a DNA molecule? Okay, so when we do DNA replication, we take our DNA strand, we kind of split it apart uh, using helicase in here. And then... On this end, we managed to get a primer to attach so that DNA polymerase can then do its job and just keep working its way in. Okay, on the other side, we have a problem in that we cannot get the primers to attach on this side. We need the primer to attach up here. And then DNA polymerase attaches and makes this fragment. And then does it again further up, another fragment, and so on and so on. So in the leading strand, all I need is primer and then my DNA polymerase can work its way up, the whole thing. On my lagging strand, what I'll end up having is a primer, DNA polymerase function, primer, DNA polymerase, primer, DNA polymerase, and then I've got gaps that I need to fix here, fix here, and fix there, and etc, etc, going up the way. So what I actually need is a ligase for that. I need primers and I need DNA polymerase. But this is the only and only, so that's the thing I need. Okay. 
Question five, we have a little uh, diagram of a TRA molecule. You could do worse than pull that out for your own notes. It's a really nice picture of, of a tRNA molecule. This is a kind of flattened 2D version of, of the three-dimensional shape. Um, so we have two sites on tRNA that you should know. Um, at the bottom, we've got a triplet codon, or triplet rather. This is not the codon, this is the anticodon, which connects on to the mRNA codon, which is a copy of the DNA codon. Okay, up the, f up the top of this at the far end, we have region X, and this one is the amino acid attachment site. Okay, and finally, this is made of RNA, so if I'm going to stick anything together, I'm going to have to use hydrogen bonds. Okay, so that's basically it hydrogen, hydrogen, and let's have an attachment site at the top. And let's have an anticodon at the bottom, which means it can only be A. Just to be clear, peptides are for joining together your amino acids. Question six. New species have evolved when two populations have become... Frankly, this is another definition, okay? Your definition that you had from Nat 5 was that species are defined as species if you have populations that cannot produce fertile offspring. So there you go. Okay, the other ones are possibly on their way to becoming new species, but they've not actually become them. Okay, they could have been isolated or they've changed, but that doesn't mean that they're actually there yet until you do the check with the fertile spring thing. Okay, question seven. Uh, an enzyme, it's substrate and a substance which binds to it. So our enzyme is our, our big white block in the middle here. Okay. And then we have the substrate, and obviously this bit here, where it's binding, must be the active site, because that's kind of by definition. And then we've got our inhibitor binding site, and notice that is not the active site. So if the inhibitor is binding somewhere which is not the active site, then it's a non-competitive inhibitor. So inhibitor binds to the active site? Nope. The effect of the inhibitor is reduced by increasing substrate concentration? No because it's not at the active site. So I'm, I'm not going to have any impact if I throw more substrate at it. Every enzyme that's been chain shape or damaged remains that way. It is non-competitive, so B. Investigation was carried out to determine the effect of lead ion concentration on the activity of the enzyme amylase. Here's my results, okay? Um, so you can see quite clearly as I'm increasing my lead concentration, my amylase activity is seriously dropping, okay? So taking this as the percentage of control, which was the zero lead. So obviously that must be 100%, and then after that it's dropping down. Okay, conclusion that can be drawn from these results is that inhibition was highest at a high lead iron concentration. Well, yeah, that makes sense, okay? Um, and just check the rest of them. Highest at low lead ion concentrations? No, because at low it was pretty decent. Um, lowest at a lead ion concentration of 0.5. That's an odd one to have put in there because we had zero activity at that point. Highest at a lead ion concentration of 0.1. Again, the opposite way around. So simple, straightforward, A. Okay, question nine. ATP is recycled to transfer energy. We've got our energy transfer diagram for ATP. Fair enough. Uh, which row in the table describes reaction one and two? Okay, so in reaction one, I've got ATP changing to ADP and PI, and as that's happening, it's releasing energy. Okay, it's releasing energy, which means it therefore, and it's also breaking a larger thing into smaller things, so this is catabolic. Now, what's sneaky about this is this is asking you about the ATP side of it, but the ATP is actually supplying energy for something else. So something else will be taking that energy in and using it for anabolic reactions. So just be really careful, because I had to read this about four times to make sure I was reading it the right way around. Okay, the ADP and PI one is going to ATP. So this is actually, you need energy put into this one because you're building up your, here's your, you know, your little ATP, and then that high energy bond that you need to make in there, you need to give energy in for that one. So this is anabolic and energy required. So correct answer is A. Okay, last one in this section, I think. Um, the fungus, um, 
again, I never see the Latin names because I always get them wrong, is grown in large fermenters to produce citric acid using starch as a substrate. The graph shows the changes in the citric acid and starch concentration in a fermenter over 168 hours. The citric acid concentration equals the starch concentration at. Okay, so the only thing, again, we've seen these, this is a double axis graph with different scales. Okay, so just be really careful. So our citric acid concentration is our open ones. So at zero hours, um, citric acid is zero. Okay, and our... Uh, so I change... Yeah, just change colours on this one. Oh, I could do that with that. Okay, and our... Starch concentration is at 60, because remember, we're reading to this side. So definitely different. OK, uh, let's look at 48 hours. At 48 hours, our citric acid concentration reading this way is 10. OK, and our um, starch concentration at 48 hours reading this way is 40. OK, still not the same. And 72 hours, uh, we have... And this is where people will get it wrong because they would just say, well, that's the crossover point. That's the same. Here's 15 on this side. But if we go for our green one this way, it's 30. Not the same. So let's look at 120 hours, which we're hoping is going to be right. OK, so 120 is, reading this way, is 10. And, oh, sorry, which way am I reading? That? No, that's the green one. See, it's so easy to get these wrong. OK, green one, reading this way, sorry, is 20. And our other one, our open one, at 120 hours, reading this way is 20. So correct answer there. Okay, just be really careful when you're reading it.